And today in the workshop I'm working on a Dynacord DDL12 digital delay, it's from 1983 and it's a little bit bashed up but we'll see if we can fix it. And this was built back in the good old days when they used to put the block diagram on the lid. It's not a full schematic so we can't do the full repair with that but I like the way it's going. What this diagram does show us is it's using a digital processor and memory. This will make this far more repairable. Well there's certainly plenty of knobs on here to keep people entertained. Hours of fun. And the back of the unit shows this is a professional bit of kit it's using balanced inputs and outputs well, and single ended. You got the choice. The owner tells me it's got no output but turns on, so um, let's test it. So we'll give it an input. And let's listen to the output on there. And of course, it needs some power. So we're feeding this an input of 1 kilohertz, 500 millivolts. So that's quite a large signal. And we got very little coming out of it. Oh, I sat a little bit of a ripple there, maybe. <laughs> okay, so it's not very well, like they said. I think the lid's going to come off next. Oh, there's not too many screws on this. And look at that, this thing's packed. Well this is a thing of beauty. Digital wasn't always easy, they used to have to put quite a lot of stuff in there. The block diagram gave us some insight into this, but what can we see? Here we see power supply section, this is quite obvious with large chunky caps, fuses and regulators. If we follow the signal path you can see the sockets coming in, coming out around the side. So we've got some sort of analogue circuitry here, just sort of op amps and just standard stuff. We've got some fancy chips here. This one here is actually the analog to digital converter. So that converts from your analog audio signal into the digital format, which gets stored on these memory chips here. These chips here are actually the same memory chips as used in the Sinclair Spectrum and probably a lot of other home computers of the early 80s. This long row of pins here is where you connect a memory upgrade. You can actually double the memory in this to create deeper effects. The delay effects work by cycling your waveform stored on the memory chips all the way through. And of course you can change how fast that happens just by adjusting this. And after you're done twiddling and mixing signals together, the output comes to this chip here, this DAC80, converts it back to analogue. With any electronic fault finding, power supplies is the place to start. <laughs> Despite that red light coming on. <laughs> and there's a very convenient place to measure all the voltages all together. So we've got plus 12, nothing there, plus 5, that's working, 5.1 volts. That's not labelled up, nothing on it anyway, and we've got minus 5. Also dead. Hmm. And we've also got a minus 15 volt rail. We've 0.5 volts on. Not healthy. I guess we should check these fuses before we go any further. <laughs> dead. Also dead. That one's okay. And that's dead. Huh. Just pop those up then. Dead, dead, dead. That's quite a lot of problems. And the fuses don't blow on their own, so <laughs> we're going to have to inject some voltages and see why they've gone. Well, we'll start with the plus or minus 15 volt rail, and we've got the power supply set up to the appropriate settings. So we've got the negative 15 volt regulator here, the output pin on the right there, and the positive one. And we'll pick a ground up on the 12 volt regulator. There we go. And let's see what happens. Oh. Oh. <laughs> They're very ill. Oh, blimey. And it's times like this I'm very grateful to have a thermal imaging camera. We'll be able to see where the energy's going. Come on, where are you? <laughs> oh, hello. We got one. Is that the only thing? I think so. And there, my friends, is a knackered tantalum capacitor. Just there. There's our short. It's not that uncommon for a tantalum capacitor to go short circuit like that. So I'm hoping that's all it is, but <laughs> you never know. I'm going to just cut one of the legs off just to make sure. Oh, 
Oh wow, we've still got problems. Is there more shorts? I think I need to crank the power up on this. So we give it, oh, one amp. That should warm things up. 15 watts each side. There's another one. Which one's that? That one. We'll chop that one out. Try that again. Oh, we've still got trouble. What now? <laughs> Something glowing there, but it's not much. That might just be the core of a chip. That might be okay. I'll ignore it for now. Because I'm losing... You know, there's an amp flow in at 1 volt. It's only like 1 watt, but oh. What's going on here? Now we've got a Zener diode and a resistor in series. That's getting quite warm. You can see some of the chips coming alive. I hope they're not all knackered. All this negative regulator is getting a bit warm. Hmm. I think we've got a problem. There's some weird things going on here, I tell you. Wow. I'll have to get the meter on this because I think there's shorts all over the place. I can't really get any power into this. I know if you can get any warm to the regulator. It's a bit weird. This minus 15 volt regulator, I'm just checking here, between the ground and the input, it's dead short. That's knackered that is. What about the output? Output's not shorted. So I've got about a kilo at home there, it's probably about right. And the positive regulator, that looks good. Yeah, no problems there. The 5 volt one works. What about this 12 volt one? <laughs> Whilst we're measuring things. Oh wow, that's short as well. Crikey. Well, I didn't think it was going to be this broken. Luckily, the back cover comes off here because I don't fancy taking all these knobs out. I think it's just a few screws and I can get it the lot. Trying to spot them black screws on a black surface. And of course, I've got to undo some screws on this side, which have been glued down. They've filled them up for the glue, it's not very nice. Right, my screwdriver. I think revenge is called for. See if it likes a bit of heat. Have a bit of that. Oh! I'll leave that there, it'll be a bit warm. So I'll take this screw out here because I'm going to take this negative regulator out because either it's shorted or the bridge rectifier is shorted. And the 12 volt one. <laughs> I didn't think the heat sink was coming off with it. <laughs> Surprises. Now we'll just check these. And there's no short. No short on that one. And none on this one. 
Hmm. Oh, that was just me touching the leaves. <laughs> Here's the AC side of this one. Okay. Output shorted. Let's just take it out and find out. Still shorted. <laughs> well, we run out of things it can be. I'm suspecting main filter caps. So I'm measuring shorts across here, shorts across here as well. You never know. I need to cut that off though. So these fair then. Oh, dead short. Blimey. This one. Yeah. Oh, something's leaked. Hmm. Has that cleared the fault on the board? Yes. That's cleared it. A bit of a wild goose chase. <laughs> and I pop the regulators back in and that bridge rectifier because I think they're fine. Just clean it up a little bit. And the bridge rectifier. I put the 12 volt reg back in. Let's see if we fixed it now. Yes, that's better. Because these are proper tests, I'm actually going to take these fuses out of the way and feed the power in on the AC side. I need to crank the voltage up a bit. Say 20 volts per side. And let's go. So over here we've got minus 15 volts, perfect. Over here we've got plus 15. Great. And the minus 5 volt rail, regulated by this little thing here, is fed off the minus 15 volt rail. And yes, that's working. Now we can do the same test on the 12 volt rail. Let's disconnect that and just shift this over to this fuse here. Eleven point nine, close enough. <laughs> Get rid of that. Solder these from the top, I reckon. Replace some of these fuses. I've got two hundred milliamp here. I'm not sure how you're supposed to get them out without tipping them all over the place. One there, one there, and a 500 milliamp fuse here. Let's 
to replace these two shorted capacitors. Just going to pop an electrolytic cap in there. I think they're not quite so troublesome. And the same with this one down here. We'll see if it works under its mains power. Well, there were such small fuses, I don't think I can protect those. <laughs> if they're going to blow, they're going to blow. Here it goes. Oh, bloody hell. I thought I saw the fuses glow, but maybe they didn't pop. I've got minus 15, got plus 15, plus 5, plus 12. It's all there. Not to mention we've got more action, got lights on now and stuff. Quite what's going on, I'm not sure. We've got some crazy crap coming out of this. Why is it peaking? Oh, so this seems to work. Okay. Delay. Oh, what's this button do? Oh! <laughs> Interesting. Ah, I see what's happening. This is actually working. Might turn that input down a bit. This thing will probably make more sense if I connect it to a speaker. Dirty pot there. That one's okay. Oh, what was that? doesn't do anything. Hmm. I think I'm going to give this quite a going over. I'm going to take the pots out and give those a good clean and uh, thinking with it's run a bad look I might replace all these capacitors. I'm not a fan of doing that but this thing seems to be uh, plagued with them. <laughs> and I've also just found the reason the pot didn't work. <laughs> it fell apart. Oh no. Oh, they're funny size shafts. Oh. oh, it's all going to come off anyway. I can straighten this as well when I've got it off. Oh god, <laughs> these don't look good. They're all furry and all oh, corroded. Hmm, 
No, I think I'm gonna take these other little nuts off the side. So disconnect a few wires. Take this LED off. I'll take this end off the board so I don't confuse myself. That could do with slackening off as well. I think we can undo these. Yes. And that one. Well this gives a bit of a clue as the condition of the pots, you can see this one, it's, it's pretty tarnished, they're all going to be a bit grubby and you can see here it's, it's just a bit covered in muck. But yeah this has snapped off, I don't know how that's come to happen because it had a nut on it, I don't know. Hmm, let's just get them out anyway. Well, I'm surprised at that. How has that happened? The wires need to come off anyway. Ah, to make matters worse, this is a 100k positive log and this one is a 100k negative log. Ah, with small shafts. Having just realised what a horrible proposition that is to replace these, I've just managed to push the negative log pot back together. Hmm. I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner with the others and uh, then I'm going to give this a glue up and uh, it might be okay. For the positive log taper I've got this pot here which will do nicely but I need to um, just modify it a bit. got to grind that little tang off there. And the shaft's too long. <laughs> Let's just trim it down a bit. I sort of connect these wires onto the back of this pot. Just need to tin the outer legs. Hmm, like that. I'm just going to glue this. Stop it falling off so easily. Just a spot of glue on each little sort of rivet. I'm going to give this a little bit of a wipe in before we go too much further. <laughs> I still sprayed the board anyway. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Shouldn't do any harm. That looks a bit better. We'll start to uh, put the pots back in there. I 
I'm just going to lift the board up a bit and just put a couple of little blocks underneath just to hold it steady. Let's see if I can put this front panel back on before I solder them. Now I can put these little screws back in and hopefully hold it all still. That'll be good. Put the nuts on them so these will be held in the exact right place before I solder them in. Now the pots are sorted, I'm going to change the caps. Uh, there's 42 in total. It's quite a lot. <laughs> well I've rounded all these up out of the parts bin, so hopefully there's enough to go round. As I got halfway through changing these, I realised that most of these caps are actually non-polarised, which means they'll be in the signal path, so they're not a hazard to the supply rails. So, I'm going to leave them alone, because they are a bit harder to get hold of. Well, the next job is to put the knobs back on. And another little job to straighten this little thing. Ha! <laughs> Do it in the vice, I think.
need to get the glue out of these screws where they gob them all up. So I'm gonna put my little beaker and uh, put some solvents on there. Just to happen to have something fairly good. Just a little dash. We'll just wait for that to destroy the glue and um, it should just crumble up and fall out. It's how to save the screws. Where stuff quickly evaporates. <laughs> it's a bit whiffy as well. But yeah, let's clean these out nicely. Yeah, these will be fine now. Time to test the handiwork. Well, it's safe to say it's working. Twiddle some knobs and all sorts happens. Well now the speed controls work. For the voltage controlled oscillator. That's good. Let's put the amp on. That's a good time to put the lid on. <laughs> it's working. Well, I didn't think there'd be that much wrong with this, but yeah. <laughs> well, it might be a bit bashed around the edges still, but it works like a new one. <laughs> Catch you next time.